Do you want to know how to get rich? Well, in today's show, we're going to tell you. We're going to discuss the boring habits of self-made millionaires. Now, you probably think it's going to be exciting to get rich. The end result is, but you're going to have to do boring things on a regular basis to get there. How do we know? My good friend Tom Corley and I have studied the rich. We've mentored the rich. We know what it involves. So welcome to this month's episode of the Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast that I run in between my regular Michael Yardney podcasts when I have a chat with Tom Corley about the boring success secrets of the rich. Welcome to the Michael Yardney podcast, where twice each week you will learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment and money in around 30 minutes. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialize in helping you grow, protect, and pass on your wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. Now, here's your host, Michael Yardney, Australia's most trusted property commentator who has once again been voted Australia's leading property investment advisor. That's the fifth time he's won a similar award in the last seven years. Every day, a tree grows just a little bit more. Now, it's impossible to see the changes caused by the growth on a day-by-day basis. But if you go fast forward 10 years and compare the picture of the old tree that was in your garden 10 years ago to what's there now, the changes would be obvious. They'd be significant. And interestingly, self-made millionaires are no different to trees, according to my good friend Tom Corley. He says that each day they do small things that inch them closer and closer to their success. And it's impossible to see the benefits on those more things on a day-to-day basis. But again, if you fast forward 10 years and compare where people have gotten to in their life financially and in all other areas, the changes would be obvious and significant. Well, that's for some people. For others, they're back to exactly where they were 10 years ago. So how do you get to that level of success? What can you do differently? What boring secrets do these millionaires have that you could learn? That's exactly what we're going to discuss today on this episode of the Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcast. To help me discuss this and discuss his Rich Habits research, I've got Tom Corley. Hello, Tom. Hi, Michael. It's good to be back. Now, Tom, you've written so much about your study of successful people, and I know you continuously do that. It's interesting to see how, over the long term, inch by inch, it does make a difference. Yeah, and it goes to the point, like, everybody wants to know the secret to success, right, Michael? You know, what we, you and I know is success is really about doing certain things every single day that are incremental. It's it's not about, you know, playing the lottery and then becoming a multimillionaire. It's not about you know, doing something very risky and all of a sudden you, you know, hit a home run and you, you're you wealthy. It's it's really nothing at all like that success and, and building wealth. It's, it's a long process of doing certain things on a daily basis. According to my research, it's really all about your habits. And, you know, there's just certain things that rich people do on a daily basis that I guess you could call the secret uh, to success. The point, though, Tom, is that if you do get luck, as you said, if you do win the lottery, if you do get an inheritance and you haven't grown to be a better person, a different person, have a more abundant mindset, turned up your wealth operating system, as I call it, then you're likely to lose it. I mean, that's what happens to people who win the lottery who haven't changed. Yeah. So so I write a lot about this. In fact, I, I'm working on a CNBC article uh, about the uh, get rich quick mindset. And they, they just uh, released another article about the lottery mindset, which is kind of similar. You know, it's these people that think, look, I don't really want to know the long, hard secrets of success. I want you to tell me what the shortcuts are. I want to cut to the chase. What do I have to do? And in, in, in six months, I'll be wealthier or, or, or a year from now or two years from now. And you know, the problem with that, Michael, is there is no answer because there is no answer. The, there's no uh, solution to your poverty that in two years you're going to become wealthy by uh, some strategy that, you know, some secret. So, you know, my point is that this get rich quick mindset flies in the face of my research, which is the, the get rich slowly through boring habits 
mindset. And if you, that's what most of the wealthy people in my study had. They had these boring habits that just inch them closer and closer to success every single day. We'll talk about those in a sec, but I think the point we're both trying to make is that it's an incremental growth over time, just like the tree we spoke about initially. And if you get too far ahead of yourself and suddenly get a windfall and psychologically, emotionally, your habits aren't right, your operate, wealth operating system hasn't grown enough to handle it, how often have you in your practice as a CPA, I've seen it often with the investors, they just lose it all. They give it away. They sabotage themselves. Oh, I, I have a, a file full of about 100 lottery winners that uh, within five years lost everything. I also have clients who inherited, uh, one client inherited $2 million. That They went through that in about uh, six years. I had another client that inherited a million and a half. They took them about 10 years to go through that. Somebody close to me in my inner circle who used to be a mentor to me, he uh, unfortunately inherited over two and a half million dollars. That was 30 years ago. Had he invested that money prudently, it would probably be worth about you know close to $10 million. Uh, he has nothing to show for that two and a half million dollars because he uh, supersized his life. And that's what happens when when you get something for nothing, which is an inheritance or a lottery winning. Money ha- doesn't have as much value to you. So you spend it as quickly as you get it. It has no value to you. You didn't spend 20 years or 25 years building up to the success that you had. It happened instantly. And so, you know, just as fast you spend it. Of course, we're talking about the windfall gains of lottery, but I'm also talking about the smaller gains as well, because people have built these ceilings, these artificial ceilings, they're not able to handle more because of their poor habits, their poor money habits. So that's what we're going to discuss in a second, the secrets, the money habits of the wealthy people. But I know there's somebody who's going to be listening to us right now, Tom, and say, yeah, that's them. It's okay. Just give me the money. I assure you, I'm not going to blow it. I'm not going to waste it. But Tom, I believe that if you took all the money in the world and distributed it evenly, I don't know, in five, six years time, it'd be back in the same proportions again for exactly this reason. We actually have each found our level of what our comfort level is. And so to move to the next level, we've got to change our habits, not all at once, one by one. So what are some of these secrets? We've discussed them before in other ways. So let's zoom through them. Let's pretend that we're going to ask a group of millionaires who made uh, their money the hard way uh, and uh, they became wealthy. And you ask them, well, how did, what, what were your secrets to success? Well, some of the things that they would say is, well, you know, I read to le- learn something new every day for 30 minutes. I kept in contact, constant contact with my important uh, rich relationships, my success-minded relationships, my the influencers who can help open doors for me. I, I made an effort to build strong relationships with them. I, I practiced certain skills every day. I wanted to improve my skills, so I did it through deliberate practice and through analytical practice. I listened to mentors. I followed their advice. These are some of the things that the wealthy people would be telling you. Well, that's a good point, Tom, because I've found most successful people have mentors. They want to get there fast and they know they can actually run there faster on their own, but they can get further if they have other people around them. So it's if you're the smartest person in your team, you're in trouble. So I've found mentors, business coaches and mastermind groups are an important part of the growth that I've had over the years. And me too, Michael, but I didn't have really any mentors in my career. So really, I've, ha- I've hanged my hat on all of these millionaires in my study, I, you know, by being like that fly on the wall and uh, kind of getting some insight into how they became wealthy and what they did to become wealthy. They were actually mentors to me. And I had 177 of these mentors. And I, boy, do I follow them. I, I think they're the, they're the greatest mentors I've I've ever had in my life, and I'm just lucky that I stumbled across them. 
Well, I think we're trying to be mentors to the people listening to this podcast, to reading our blogs, to watching our videos. That's part of the reason we're doing it, because this is the information we would have liked to have many years ago, and it is much easier to get virtual mentors as well. But one of the habits that I've found of wealthy people is they're prepared to pay for their mentors. There's only so much and so far you can go with the free information on the internet. You actually need somebody to be your unreasonable friend. You need somebody to actually be accountable to. You need somebody who's got some skin in the game because it's their job, their responsibility, rather than just reading blogs and and, and, uh, following things on the internet. So, Tom, you were going through the habits and uh, you were about to mention uh, further habits. Yeah, so if if we were going to continue along this question, a line of questioning, asking the millionaires, what were your secrets to success? Well, another one would be, hey, I exercised every day aerobically uh, for 30 minutes. And uh, you say, well, why? Why is aerobic exercise uh, a rich habit? Why is, I mean, what does that have to do anything with success? And what I found from my research is aerobic exercise actually, because it forces you to take in more oxygen. It, the oxygen uh, is used by the brain in two ways. One is to, as a catalyst, to convert glucose to ATP, which is the ultimate energy source fuel. Uh, and it's also a uh, sponge. It cleans up all the waste product inside every cell of the body, including the brain cells. So when you exercise aerobically, you're actually improving the health of your brain cells, which increases your IQ because it. Uh, it also produces BDNF, w- which uh, it helps grow the my- myelin sheath around the axons of every neuron. So there's a lot of good reasons to exercise, why millionaires exercise. It actually increases their brain performance. And you know, Michael, how many decisions you have to make running a business. Uh, you've got multiple businesses. I've got three that I'm running. There's some days that your head's spinning around. Well, if you have... Um, your brain is working optimally, you're going to be able to make good decisions. If it's not a healthy brain, you're going to make poor poor decisions, poor choices, which cost you money. Now, it's interesting, Tom, because you're much better at exercise than me. And I've been a bit slack the last couple of days. And I did get on the treadmill for half an hour before we're having our chat today. And it's the first time in five or six days. And I do feel different. And I thought, gee, why haven't I been doing this? You, you, there's no doubt that uh, it does kick in the endorphins and make you feel better. So exercise is important. And so is eating. They're two areas that you, I guess, much better at than me. And I guess the message here is that you can't be perfect at all the rich habits. We all are walking around with one foot on the accelerator and one on the brake pedal. So we've got empowering beliefs and disempowering beliefs. We've got some rich habits and poor habits. But the intention of, I guess, this chat today is to make you aware of the habits that wealthy people, successful people, rich people have so that you can start emulating some of those and getting rid of some of your disempowering beliefs and bad habits. I think another common habit of wealthy people is that they, successful people is that they, just like you and me, they have problems, they have obstacles, things do get in the way, but they have a way of getting around it, Tom, because they've got a laser-like focus, while other people just give up. Yes, and this is, uh, you know, an important point because it's, it's really highlighting one of the fundamental rich habits of wealthy people, and it's their ability to focus. They focus They don't ignore problems. They don't run away from obstacles. They instead look at these things and say, okay, I've got to solve for this problem. I've got to overcome this obstacle. And uh, they become obsessed, almost fanatical about solving problems and overcoming obstacles. And it's important that they have a positive mental outlook, which most of the wealthy people in my study did have. Because uh, if you have a positive mental outlook, you're looking for solutions. If you have a negative mental outlook, you're looking for problems and obstacles. So it's a completely different way of looking at things. You want to have that positive mental outlook so that you can solve the problems and the obstacles. Now, we've discussed in previous podcasts the importance of that. And one of them is 
it's actually going to make people around you feel better about you, trust you more, and you're also going to pass these habits on to your children. So what would life be like at home if your parents kept talking about negativity and how bad the world is and how the boss is not looking after them and the government isn't looking after them? How different would it be if you came home and talked to your family and your children and your grandchildren about how good the world is, how lucky we are to live today at the best time in history and the best country in the world, how there's always opportunities to do things further. So, gee, it's an important one, Tom, having a positive mental outlook. Yeah, it's critical. And it's actually probably the most common rich habit of self-made millionaires. They had a positive mental outlook, almost all of them. And that positive mental outlook, without it, I'm telling you, I don't care how many rich habits you have. If you don't have a positive mental outlook, you're not going to succeed because you're not going to be able to find the solutions to your problem, which are really, you know, the, the key to success. It's if you pursue a dream, if you pursue any initiative, any business, you are going to have a hundred, a thousand problems and obstacles. If you have a negative outlook, you're never going to be able to solve them. If you have a positive outlook, you'll be able to solve each and every one of them. Well, many years ago, we were having challenges. It was over 10, 12 years ago now during the global financial crisis, and our business was having problems and some staff were leaving. And I remember my business coach at the time said to me, Michael, your job is to solve problems. Your job is to fix the problems. If other people could solve the problems, they would be the CEO, they would be the boss. And that totally changed my attitude. So my job was to come to work to solve problems. And I didn't see them as a failure or as a bad thing anymore. I saw it as my strength and my ability, which helped me grow, helped my company grow. And that is partly the positive mental outlook. And it's partly the other thing you mentioned just a moment ago too, the idea that failure isn't bad. I'm a real success at failure. All it's done is help me get to the next step. But I've also done it by not just taking risks, but by taking calculated risks, Tom, by actually not just uh, having a knee-jerk reaction, but any new idea, any new venture. I do my homework beforehand. Yeah, that's, that's so important because, you know, a lot of people have the misconception that wealthy people are wealthy because they take these huge risks and they get lucky. And uh, what I found in my research was that wasn't true. They sure they took risks, but they actually studied something 360 degrees. They wanted to know what every potential outcome could could be. What what bad things could happen, and then they they had a plan of action. If something went wrong, they said, "Okay, I, I anticipated that possibility, so this is the plan that I have." So when they run into problems. Uh, they're not so shocked by it because they kind of expected it in a way. Uh, they built it into their business model that there were going to be problems and they were going to have solutions to those problems. Now, we're talking about the answers that successful people would give you if you asked them what is their secrets. I bet one of them, Tom, would be that they would have a goal, they'd have a plan, they'd know where they want to get to rather than just coming to business, going to work every day and whatever happens is going to happen. And that's one of the reasons they got to somewhere because they knew where they were going. Yeah. So they they this is a really cool topic. Successful people, people that uh, were ordinary people and became extraordinarily successful, they created a vision of their future lives, their future selves. Uh, they saw themselves 10, 15, 20 years into the future as somebody else. And then they, uh, because they knew where they were going, what their destination was, what their end was, uh, they created these goals that around their dreams that allowed them like rungs on a ladder. They climbed that ladder and they got higher and higher. And when they got to the top, that was the realization of their, their dream life. Uh, so yeah, they they were pursuing goals, they were pursuing the dreams, and all the while, Michael, they had clarity. They knew exactly what their vision was, where they wanted to be. For me, I want to be J.C. Jobs, who's one of the characters I write about in my book. He's the best, top, most successful self-help expert in the world. He's mentored millions and millions of people. Well, that's who I want to be. 
And so I know where I'm going to go. I know what, what the end is. Now it's just a matter of every day working to get there. And I do that through my goals and my dreams. Well, you've studied them and you've written about them in your own books and your blogs and in our joint book, Rich Habits, Poor Habits. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're wanting to get deeper into this, go to richhabitspoorhabits.com where you can find out about Tom and my best-selling book. It's an international bestseller and now being translated into five languages. And you can get your own copy online through Amazon or through richhabitspoorhabits.com. And you can learn the habits of the successful people so that you can become more like them. Tom, if I asked the rich person a few other questions or the same question, but asked for some more answers, what would they say? Well, one of the things they would say to you, Michael, is, hey, one of the things I did was I always tried to exceed the expectations of everyone I did business with. And part of that is is really teeing it up properly. What poor people will do is they'll, they'll say, hey, I can do X. And then they don't do X, they do something less than X. Well, the rich person will say, uh, I can do something less than X, and then they will try and uh, hit X. They will try and exceed the expectations that they set. So they try and manage their expectations out of the gate. They say, I can do this. And the person will say, well, you know, I was kind of hoping you could do that. I said, no, I can't do that. I can do this. And they say, okay, fine, we'll hire you and you do that. And then they know that they're shooting for something better than this. And when they do that, they exceed the expectations of whoever they're doing business with, which makes that person happy because they believe that they got some a great deal because they got more than they expected. When you exceed the expectations of others, it makes that other person happy. And happiness is an emotion. When you tap into the happiness emotions of anybody you do business with, you you own them as a customer for life. Okay. What else would they say they've done, Tom? Well, I, I certainly tried to control my emotions. I did not want people who I did business with to be scared of me, to be nervous about my emotional state. You know, one day I'm up, one day I'm down. I wanted them to, to believe that I was on an even keel because that means I have total control over my life. Uh, people that don't have control over their life, they – they express that through their emotions and people don't want to do pe- business with people that have no control over their life. The wealthy people will say, I control my emotions. Another thing that the wealthy people might say to you is, hey, I was very careful how I communicated to other people. I re- didn't want curse. I didn't use offensive language. Uh, I didn't do anything that I thought would insult the person or damage the relationship the relationship that I might have spent five years trying to build. So I was very cautious in the use of uh, my language. And, you know, another thing they might say is I treated everybody with respect. Now, I used to be a janitor. That's how I got through college. I worked 20 hours a week as a janitor. So you know what, Michael, when I see janitors, I have a lot of respect for them. Well, if you're a wealthy person, at least according to my research, they treated everyone, including the janitor, with a great deal of respect because you never know who that person is that you're talking to. Just because, you know, you heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, it's true. They're one of my, the wealthiest clients that I have. They're worth about $40 million. Uh, if you met this person on the street, you would think, honestly, you'd want to hit, hand them a couple of dollars. You felt so bad for them. The way they were dressed, you know? Well, interestingly, some friends of ours recently said, hey, Michael, you're always speaking to the waiting staff, the waiters, the waitresses at the the restaurants and the bars that we're going to, and I give them a tip and I spend time asking them because in Australia, a lot of the people serving us uh, tend to be uh, young people who have got a work visa here. They're often from Europe and they've always got interesting stories, but I treat those people with respect because they could be my daughter, they could be my son, um, and, and same with anybody else. There's somebody's mother, there's somebody's father, it could be mine. So I've learned a long time ago the importance of not judging people, not by what they wear, not by their clothes. Uh, of course, you've got to judge some people by their behaviour, but don't make rash judgments of them. Um, and uh, if you treat everybody with the respect they deserve, and I like giving tips. There's a nice way of giving charity to people because they've actually worked for it rather than giving it to somebody who's sitting outside on the street uh, with a hat in their hand. I'd rather give it to somebody who's actually taking the time and uh, this working. 
That's right. You you know you you want you want to respect everybody, Michael, especially the people that deserve it. Uh, and you know the wealthy people, the way that they look at it is, hey, you know those that treat me poorly, I'm going to refuse to do business with them. And those that treat me with respect, the respect that I believe I deserve, I'm going to do business with them. So they ha- that's their mindset. That's how they think. So if you imagine that you are hanging out with some rich person who you want to do business with, and they see you. Uh, treating the staff poorly, uh, they're going to probably look at you and say, I don't want to have anything to do with this person. Because if that's the way they're treating that that low, lowly person in that lowly station, that's probably a bad habit that they have. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. Well, treating your staff is important as well. And respecting them, calling them by name, finding the good things that they've done, giving them a treat. Today, we're recording this on a Friday. That's not the day that the show's going to go out. And my property management staff, there's about 12 of them there in the Melbourne office, know that on Friday, Michael comes around with Tim Tams. Now, I don't know if in America you know what Tim Tams are, but they're beautiful chocolate biscuits with caramel on the inside. And it's just a little treat I give them, and it's a little bit of fun and something uh, that they then have a little treat back for me because they know Michael likes treats as well. So treat everybody with respect. But then there's some people you just should steer clear of because they're toxic people. Yeah, and so here's this is a very good point and a great way to segue into this topic. Not everybody deserves your respect. So I want to repeat that. Not everyone you come into contact with deserves your respect. The people that deserve your respect are the upbeat, optimistic, success-minded people. These are the people that are going to go somewhere in life. These are the people that will more likely than not have your interest at heart. They're going to try and exceed your expectation. You don't want to give respect or do business with people that are toxic. These are the people that talk nasty to uh, people that are below them, to their staff, to waiters, and waitresses, to janitors. Uh, You don't want to have anything to do with those toxic people because they don't have your interest at heart. They have bad habits. They have toxic habits. Uh, and they're going to say bad things behind your back. You want people who have a positive outlook and that are focused on seeking and finding solutions to problems. That's what positive people do. Uh, you want problem solvers and negative people, toxic people. They're they're not problem solvers. They're they're problem finders. Uh, so you want to avoid those people. Now, interestingly, we've gone through a whole list of things that successful people would tell you that they did to make themselves more successful. Clearly, there's lots more that they would do. But if we kept going on with this list, Tom, I think some people would stop listening. In fact, I bet you some people started this podcast and cut out halfway through your list of secrets because they were looking for the shortcut, the speed train, something that would make it happen quickly. And all you've offered them at the moment, Tom, is boring ideas, nothing world shattering, uh, nothing worth listening to. But that's the secret. This is the good stuff. Others have been waiting for the good stuff. This is it, isn't it? That's right. And and so there's no aha moment here because a lot of this stuff you've probably heard before. You might even know it. But there's no aha moment. You, there's no shortcut to success you were hoping for. So you tune out. You don't want to really hear the boring secrets to success. To be honest with you, 95% of the people out there will tune this out because they really don't want uh, to do the heavy lifting that success requires, Michael. Uh, it's just boring success really getting there. You're pushing a ball up the hill and you're, you're, you're overcoming obstacles and problems and you know, there's, it's just not, it's not a fun journey, but uh, that's the reality of it. It, it is. But the destination is fantastic, Tom. Oh, that's cool. the good thing. So you got to enjoy the journey along the way, knowing that there's going to be obstacles, knowing that you're going to have to consistently do little things consistently, right? Like we started at the beginning, grow day by day, move forward step by step, have your goals, have your dreams and achieve them. That's the secret. Nothing exciting. They're boring habits. They're the habits that you've written about in your daily blog, richhabits.net, that you write about for me on Property Update that we do in our videos and that we do in these monthly podcasts. They're boring, Tom, but you know what? They guarantee success. 
Yeah, so you're right, Michael. The, the actual secret to success is that they're boring daily habits, and uh, but they're habits that work. And uh, if you are pursuing success, pursuing a dream, pursuing anything, you want to know what those habits are. And that's what we're, why we're doing this podcast. We're trying to open up your eyes to those individuals who are going to pursue something and want to get on the path to success. We're trying to open up their eyes and tell them this is what you need to do. Do as much as you can to enjoy the journey because it's going to be a hard journey. But boy, when when you reach the top of that mountain and you're looking out on that mountain, everybody down there is looking up at you, Michael, and it's a great feeling. It is. So once again, I've always enjoyed our chat, so I look forward to our next one, these regular Rich Habits, Poor Habits podcasts. Thanks for your time, Tom. Thank you, Michael. It was great being with you. At the outset, I promised to share with you the boring success secrets of the rich. And there they are. Do them one by one, little by little, day by day, and over time they're going to compound And there's no reason at all why you too can't become successful. If you've got benefit from today's show and you want to find out more about these, why not go to richhabitspoorhabits.com and get a copy of my top best-selling book that I wrote with Tom Cawley, Rich Habits, Poor Habits. And if you want to find out more, subscribe to my daily property update newsletter where Tom writes regular columns on the poor habits of the average person and the rich habits of the successful people and you'll get lots more information from me and other experts about how to become financially fluent better off with money success and property investment and if you did get benefit from today's show why not tell somebody else about it because we want to make as many people as possible financially fluent we want you to get rich as well i look forward to bringing you my regular monthly ID podcasts twice a week in the meantime Spend your time wisely. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Michael Yardney Podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect, and pass on their wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. If you like what you heard and don't already subscribe, you'll find us on iTunes or on your favorite Android app as the Michael Yardney Podcast. Watch out for our next show, which comes to you twice a week, and you'll learn some new ideas about property investment, success, and money in around 30 minutes. To get more of Michael's thoughts, go across to www.propertyupdate.com.au and sign up for his daily morning briefing, and you'll hear from not only Michael, but a group of leading property success and money experts. And just a reminder that the information you heard in this show today is general educational advice and not specific investment advice, as we don't know your personal circumstances. If you're looking for specific advice, why not ask the team at Metropole to help you?